السنوية بتاريخ السادة الحضور الكرام أعضاء هيئة التدريس وطلاب ودكاترة العلاج الطبيعي في ندعو العمادات في منظمة كلية العلاج الطبيعي التي يلقيها دكتور سيف سان بعمال السعودي أم له كاتبين وذلك تحت إشراف الأستاذ الدكتور سامي عبد الصمد ناصر عميد كلية العلاج الطبيعي وتتشرف الكلية بتقديم دكتور سيف سان مؤسس وهو مؤسس كلية أونتاريو دكتور سيف درس في جامعة نوفا لدكتور أستاذ and the Miss Marshall, students and doctors. But I'm going to give a welcome to you all as a scientific literature organized by Faculty of Physical Therapy, Austin Basi and Lopat Bay, supervised by Dr. Samia the Samad Mahdi, Dean of the College. Our faculty is presenting Dr. Steve Samet. Dr. Steve Samet is the founder of the Austin Basi College of Ontario. Dr. Steve studied at Novi College of Classic Medicine. Now with Professor Sami Abdul Sam. Thank you. 
by your hands. Um, some of the things I get asked everywhere I go, can you show me this technique? Is there a way to make it an echo? Echo, echo, echo. Like this? That's better? Yeah. You like that?
and then I do a lot of different things. But I, my fascia is a lot of my day. And my patients, before I tell you about my fascia, my patients are tragic. Uh, the patients that I see, half of it is what you would think. It's just, it's just, what do you think for manipulation? Back pain, what Dr. Sandy asked me, is the number one reason around the world why people see anybody for therapy. Any type of therapy, whether it's acupuncture, um, their physician, uh, massage, chiropractic, the number one complaint, back pain. Headache and cephalgia, number two. That's half my day. The other half of my day are bizarre things. Kids with genetic problems, cancer patients who are, who are not home to live, other neurologic problems. I didn't get a formula for that in osteopathy. I'm not telling you I'm curing cancer patients either. What I'm saying is there's an approach to them to help them the last few months of their life. Palliation. I've got autistic children to talk. I've no research for it. But sometimes you get a kid to talk who never spoke. And a lot of that is through soft touch. So my fascia, what I'm going to show you today, will be mild to moderate to you can use some heavy touch. The visceral that we'll have some fun with will be uncomfortable. And I'm being nice. Okay? I know some patients like my father, if I don't injure my father, he's not happy. The treatment didn't happen. Unless I do something really heavy to him. So this will be the heavy things that you can do for a purpose. Okay? So my fascial, why should fascia change anything? Why is it even important? What is the difference between me pulling on the fascia and massage? Fascia has been observed all throughout history. I would like to tell you about osteopathic medicine, which is less than 150 years old, but all throughout history people have made observations about fascia. Uh, this is not something new. Fascia is a, more or less about 16% of your total body weight, about a quarter of your total body water is dedicated to this system. And for this reason, a lot of people in my profession will tell you, I treated you, you need to drink a lot of water. I don't feel that way. You do whatever it is you do. It's like me telling you to not smoke. If I tell you to not smoke, you will not smoke in my office, and then you will light up as soon as you get to the parking lot. If you're somebody who doesn't drink water, you won't drink water anyway. Is it good for you? Yeah, I think you should drink water. What's in fascia? Fascia has fibroblasts, mast cells, histiocytes. That's what's in the cells. Inside the cells, you have collagen fibers, elastic fibers, glycogen, glycans, and these all function to give you adaptability. Without fascia, you wouldn't be able to have a fluid movement. You wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to go from here to there without getting all these micro traumas that you could recover from. You could make a robot, you could take a robot and make it out of excuse me, titanium, something really strong. But by the end of the day of walking, you start to have different problems. You transfer all your forces through fascia. Uh, there's about 15 types of uh, fascia, uh, of collagen, not just one type. The types are not so important, but it is in a triple helix. Everyone knows the double helix, the DNA, that twisted strand. This is in three twisted strands. Um, the function of that, what's most important is that it has a tensile strength. Tensile strength is if I take a piece of paper and I tear it. Okay, fascia has a resistance to tearing. How much resistance to tearing does it have? Uh, this is the audience participation part of the program. <laughs> I'm just holding it. I'm just holding it. I'm not being too embarrassed anymore. Okay. When I was in school, we had a big auditorium, and it was big columns, right? Big, like a big hole in the middle. And so if Dr. Sandy was my teacher, and he asked me, he's going to ask a question, I got behind the column like this. So it was between me and him. And my teacher, my teacher had this, psychic ability to know that I didn't know the question. So he would move that way, and I would move this way. We would move like the wind. And then he 
he would just call my name from behind the pole that I didn't see. But uh, I'm not a good liar, so and then my teacher would ask me something I didn't know, I'd say, yep, I don't know. I'm stupid, okay. <laughs> you may ask the next person, you know, I, I don't have a clue. Um, that was my way of dealing with it. So, Carlton here. Carlton has a very fine style strength. And my teacher told me, and many other people have said, that the strength is 2,000 foot pounds. I don't know what it is in Newton, Newtons, but 2,000 foot pounds per square inch. Okay, let's think about it. 2,000 foot pounds per square inch. So your bone is about seven or eight hundred. So that says fascia is about three times stronger than bone. Would you agree? I say. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay, we're going to come back to that idea later. Um, where is fascia? It's everywhere, but it's not just in medical school. We did our dissection, and because I was from osteopathic school, we said fascia was important. We did our dissection, we ripped the fascia out, and we looked at the important stuff: heart, lungs, liver, kidney. That's what they tested us on: heart, lung, liver, kidney. So they told us this story, but it wasn't really important. Fascia is here, you can find in your areola or connective tissue. This is a type of fascia. You find fibroblasts. This is supporting most of your organs. Uh, most of your organs, this is what keeps them in place. Without the support, you would not have the function. If we talk about function inside, uh, inside your organs, you will find another type of fascia, particular connective tissues, like in your spleen, in your lymph nodes, in your bone marrow. Fascia helps make certain areas um, irregular. You look at, we look at this and we think, well, that's just a disorganized mess. It's not a disorganized mess. It's on purpose. When, blo when blood flows through here through the spleen, you need disorganization. Why do you need disorganization? The, um, I think it's Here, one thing you said. That's a good idea, but I think you're missing my question. When blood flows through the spleen, do you want it to flow in and out, or do you want it to mix around? Did you say in and out? I give you another chance. Good, good answer. Because the spleen is going to clean. Areas where we have exchange, where things are going to be uh, exchanged in your body, we have turbulence. I won't go too far into it. When you exchange air, when you digest, when you clean something through your liver, your kidneys, your organs, you don't want it in and out. This is the bad part about sitting in front, because you're getting really nervous now. But I'm just going to torture these two people right here for you to just relax. So, is there a place in your body where you want in and out? Well, that's your arteries and your veins. Your arteries are transporting oxygen from here to there, carbon dioxide from here to there in the veins. You don't want the exchange. This is part of my training as an osteopath, not just to do techniques, but to think about how the body is supposed to function. And you're going to say to yourself, self, does this matter for manipulation? It does. It does. Okay, um, in fat tissue, that is supported by your collagen fibers as well. We find dense regular connective tissue. This is what makes our ligaments and our tendons. We find um, omnidirectional tensile forces. What has omnidirectional tensile forces? Your skin. Your skin gets pushed on the board. You have another type of specialized fashion. Um, dense regular elastic connective tissue. This is what we find in aorta or in arterioles. In that situation, you want to transmit a pulse. Okay, a pulse is transmitted by tunica muscularis, a thick muscular layer. And uh, action. So this extracellular matrix is made of glycans, collagen, elastic fibers, that allow things to retain shape, has a lot of water, has a lot of cellular components, 
and in all functions he made it really strong. And how strong was it? You and me. High five. Okay. Two thousand foot pounds per square inch. And I said to myself, it's funny, I've been teaching for many, many years. I've been practicing for 20 years. And a student asked me, I forget where, what country, whatever, said, Dr. Sanders, how do you know it's 2,000 foot pounds per square inch? I, I've been teaching it forever. And I said, well, you know, it's 2,000 foot pounds per square inch. Teacher told me. <laughs> My teacher told me it is, so it must be. And I said, this must be in literature. I must be able to find this somewhere. It must exist. I can look up bone and find it pretty quickly, what the shearing strength of bone is. I had to do a search. When I found it, I found in a um, orthopedic journal of bone and joint research. In 1931, they did an in vivo study of tensor fasciolata. In vivo, live person, probably a medical student that had to have it done. And what they found was fascia wasn't 2,000 pounds, it was 7,000 pounds per square inch. Now, without making your head explode, if you compare the relative density, uh, if you compare the specific gravities, it gives it an equivalence of 45,000 pounds per square inch. It's, it's a relatively equivalent to soft steel. So if your bone is 700, 800 foot pounds, this is 45,000. You could not survive. You couldn't do anything without fascia. Without fascia transmitting your forces, that's the only way you can explain something that is either thin like a spider web or dense like a tendon, how it can resist the types of traumas we do. But then I'm going to go quickly through these so that I have more time to do these. I'm going to go very quickly through a lot of these slides. Um, fascia has uh, some properties which allow it to be viscous. It has a rate at which it changes. We don't just rub on something and it's changed. We have to sustain pressure. It has an elasticity, it wants to snap back. When we're doing my fascia release, we want to cast this in. We want to do something, we want to change that tissue and get a sustained change. It has some mechanical properties for support and harmonization and it has some conduit. It has metabolic properties of diffusion and energy storage. Um, it has immunologic properties. How does fascia have immunologic properties? And then this will be back to you. How does it have immunologic properties? You have know, areas in your body where you have specialized fenestrated fascia. One is blood brain barrier. It makes it hard to get certain drugs into your brain. You have two other fascial barriers that are quite sophisticated. You know what they are. I'll tell you that a man has one and a woman has the other one. You want to take a guess? You want to Man has a testicular blood barrier and a woman has a placental barrier. The other areas that fascia is part of the key to protecting the baby and um, the sperm. Um, fascia is superficial leaves upstairs. As I said, in Oxford School they said this is important. They never asked us questions on it. Okay, which means they didn't think it was important. Medicine is important, surgery is important. Unfortunately, the American model turns out people like me, but most of my friends are doing um, the same thing you're in need of. We're doing very, very little, if any, manipulation. Here's some here's a place where fascia is important. This is important for your plastic surgeons. I don't know these, but these are called the lines of Langer. When I would do emergency medicine, if your kid got cut in the forehead, I would sew it together. But if they got cut on the lip, or like this, I would call them, in the United States, I would call plastic surgeon to do it. I don't want them to say, you know, Steve Sander was here, that's what it's going to look like when I'm done. Um, and that's because they understand these lines, these fascial lines. People pay a lot of money for this plastic surgery to have them look a certain way. I forget what book I took this out of, but these are just some other ideas about fascia. Now, some of them think the body is a series of tubes within tubes within tubes. Supporting the body. We could link that to a uh, tensegrity model, which we don't have time for. Without fascia, your muscles 
couldn't do anything without uh, having the endo and paramyceum to give your muscles shape so that the contractions make sense. Nothing would happen. Um, part of the myelin sheath is it involves this special support to transmit uh, neurotransmission. Here's some other ideas, uh, very popular ideas today. Transsexual, cranial osteopathy, which we just discussed for a couple of days in the hero. Um, people discuss these areas as having somewhat transverse action in the body from heart and things. It's another idea. I think this from another book showing um, perhaps these different retained patterns we might have as a result of fashion. I'm not asking you to believe this and say it's true, it's not true. I just want you to see what other people in our profession are thinking that sustained fascia can cause a problem. Uh, this is, you know, some, this is acute cross extensor reflex. This is, you know, a what was me. Uh, this is another idea about looking at different body postures, how that might affect fascia. This is an osteopath uh, from the 1960s, Gordon's name, and he was looking at how body levels could be changed uh, based on fascial pull. Again, these are just rapid ideas I want you to see that other people are thinking about fashion. This is what I'll show. If I get a group of MDs, um, if I get to get a group of MDs and write these in the hospital in my country, it's because I'm entertaining. It's not because they want to learn anything. Okay, so I'll, if I'm going to entertain them with what can they learn in five minutes, I'll show them how to look at body levels and how to look for what's out of them. I'm not going to try to make them understand the relationship. They don't want them. I want them to be comfortable to refer the patient to me. So I give them some ideas like this. So how do we look at people? Body, mind, spirit. Uh, this is what we were taught in day one of our medical school. We look for asymmetry, restriction, alteration, motion, tissue texture changes, and, and so forth. That was day one. Do um, you think the mind and body are connected, sir? Yes, I think so. Can you tell me about it? Um, what was it? That's it? That's all I guess? Without what? I won't ask you. Um, how do the mind and water connected? So we have these concepts of barriers. Um, it's the same concepts you already know. Uh, this little bar here and this bar here will never sit up front again. If I ever return, Inshallah, I return to the Ferris University. These two will never sit up front. They will be in the back. <laughs> they will be recording it with a camera in the back. Um, so we have we have certain restrictions, um, natural muscular restrictions within this bar. If I turn my head from left, you know, left to right, this patient active part is fascia and muscles that eventually stop me. That's the physiological barrier. The anatomic barrier, a little bit beyond that, when someone does their mobilization, what stops that? Ligaments and the bones. So when we go to where it's easy, we call it, our terminology we call it indirect, I don't know if I use the same words. If we take something the way it doesn't, uh, if we take something the way it does not want to go, we call it direct technique. So how do we treat? We use, make use of my fascial barriers and sustain pressure so that we can get some sort of release. Um, why my fascial? Well, I'll tell you why I like it. Um, it's a reasonably non threatening way to introduce yourself to a patient. And what I'm going to show you is therapeutic and non threatening. A lot of people have been manipulated by someone else, someone else, someone else, and they get on your table and you say, I'm not going to hurt you. And they go, okay. But they don't really believe you, you know, until you start touching them. So I give people a whole set of rules, and I'll, I'll tell you what I do exactly with the patient as I apply the technique. And what I say from my mouth is as important as your touch. Um, touch is very important. It's not just that you're doing a technique. There's so many things that a patient understands from you touching.
Um, it's a way to begin a relationship. Because when you're treating a patient, you have, you're more fortunate than me. You have, when I talk to a lot of therapists over the last few days, they say you have a year, two years, or you have a long time to treat a patient. I know. I got a few treatments. And if, I'm, if I'm not getting somewhere, I'm discharging them. Um, these are some misconceptions I had. Um, I had as I was learning medicine surgery that it was non-specific. It was just this big technique, um, but I wasn't specific. That you have to be rough to be effective. That's not true. You can be rough, you cannot be rough. It takes too long to be practical. No. I see three people an hour, and that's from head to toe. And I'm the most expensive person you would find in Ireland. That's not a joke. But before you look at me like I'm, that's what I'm about, you need to understand 20% of what I do, I don't charge anything. So my grandfather said, rich people should have tears in their eyes when they're paying the bill. And I make rich people pay so that I can do charity and do things that I want to do. I've never, ever turned away a patient because of money. Never. I've turned away some rich people that don't want to pay me. Uh, so I see three people an hour, and they are big problems. Um, isn't it the same as getting a massage? No. Massage is great, but I'm working 20 minutes to see a patient. That's from coming in to going out, which means I have 15 minutes of contact time. What's the complaint I get from adults? I want you to do it longer. What's my answer? Go get a massage. Massage feels great. They do that by the hour. I just don't know if it'll fix your problem. Now, I want to tell you about a small touch. So, we have to that we just put in the office. And that's what you have to do. Okay, you're going to come up to the table. No, no, I, I want to... I, I can do this without a microphone for a little part. Okay. 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 Okay.
So, small touch is something we recognize. We recognize it every day. Uh, there's more than that. There's even things we're not touching. But um, maybe it'll go too far off topic. But we sense a lot of things about each other. Now a patient comes into you and they say, my back is hurting. Um, this isn't, they're not asking you about to fix, fix the kitchen sink. They're not asking you about you know, fixing a piece of the, uh, the wall. It's their back. And they have pain. And you're going to touch them. It's very personal. You can, so I say certain things to people. I'm going to go through a few slides and I'm going to do a bunch of techniques. I'm going to ask a few of you to come down here and try it. I'll, I'll demonstrate on just a, a one or two where you're comfortable. If you're looking for low back pain, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep my conversation to the low back, okay? I'm going to keep my conversation to the low back. And low back pain is not just low back. I ask people, if you tell me your back hurts, you tell me your neck hurts, I'm going to ask you, you see my back hurts. I say, does your neck bother you? Do you have headaches? Do you sleep? How are your bowels? Five things. Five very common conditions. Because you may find people that are having back problems say, well, uh, I, I do have some headaches. I get headaches twice a week, but I'm not here for that. I'm just here for this. Um, how do you sleep? I sleep terrible, but I'm not here for that. The reason why I ask them is not not to sell my treatment to them, but I want to know how you really are. You told me your back hurts, but you're more than this. So that if I have treated you, I don't get a year of treatment. If I treat you um, two, three times, and you tell me, how are you? I feel the same. I'm no better. How are you sleeping? Well, you know what? I am a little better. I, I'm sleeping a little better. Um, my headache's better, but I don't think I'm better. You don't think these two are connected? You don't think these ideas are connected? The simplest way I explain to patients is, let's see, if I twist my shirt, fascia, muscles, whatever, the twist, the lines go everywhere. I don't know what you're going to complain of. You might be complaining of pain here, and I find a key lesion over here. That's why I disregard what they say, and I go from head to toe to treat everything. But now, we're doing like a microscope. What can I do for the low back? Uh, low back, key is we got all these muscles, the cismus, uh, erector spinae underneath there, squeeze uh, this pretty far down, uh, a lot of complicated twisting and turning. I'm going to start with the most non threatening, safe thing I can think of. This was my uh, youngest son who was 11. For 20 bucks, you could get that child to do anything. I said, Louis, I need to take some photos. Now he's 24, it costs a lot more than $20. And he's all, he's all muscles like this. The price has gone up, so I still have to deal with the old pictures. So um, I do some myofascial like this, and uh, there are pictures, and then I'll demonstrate and explain here. I use I'll put a big hand across the back. I will um, stay um, hips flat. I'll stay on the same side of the spine, and I'll make a um, line between my thumb and my hand. I'll put the other hand on top. I'll do it with one hand, big hands. I can hold a basketball with one hand. So if I put two hands on your back, it's your low back, um, a lot more. So I may do it this way. I like to do it this way, both hands are over. It's, it's not the technique so much as what you're sensing, what level of restriction you're gonna work at. Uh, okay, so here's both thumbs. So let me, uh, let me do, uh, let me go straight up. I'm one of the gentlemen who is comfortable coming down. Uh, I can demonstrate on the Not all at once, just form the line here. Okay, let me do it to the air. Is there any, you can leave your clothes on. I don't think anybody's clothes off. I, this will not be painful, I promise. It will not be embarrassing. I will not ask you any questions.
Ласки, конечно. I'll do this, I'll walk around the other side, I'll do the same thing. 
And then I will come back and do it with rhythm. I'll put two hands on it. It's a low back pain, but you see the size of my hands. I'm going to go down, up. We call this the cat walk. I'm sure to watch how a cat starts to dig into the carpet like that. I go on and off. I like to do things that are rhythmic, things that have um, rhythm. Because when, in the end of my treatment, I have about 15 minutes of contact time. I'm going to be nice, and in the middle I'm going to be not nice, and in the end I'm going to put it to sleep. I'm going to try to. My end goal is to do things that are rhythmic, um, and for him to be... And then wake him up, time to go. Okay. That has nothing to do with osteopathy, it just has to do with... This is a concert. Um, you're putting everything together here, um, and rhythm is one way to do it. Um, is that good? Plus. Thank you. Okay. Um, stay there. Someone demonstrated to do it again. I want to tell you something about rhythm. Is that irritating? Yeah, it's irritating me too. Because you can't deny it, you can't escape it. So there are things that I will do to him um, at the end and a little bit at the beginning. Is I will put a rhythm into somebody, and you will follow it. You will. It's inescapable. And if you have some trust in me, if I've done some things that feel good to you, I will put a rhythm, and then I will go slower and softer. Slower. Hypnotizing people, it's not osteopathic, or is it? I don't know, this is the whole game we play. I have to do things that are going to be uncomfortable to him, stay right there, and I have to get him to trust me. And I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to hit something painful when I didn't think it was. Uh, another technique I like to do after I've done some of this technique uh, here is I like to do something to try and elongate the muscle bellies, uh, the deeper bellies. I, there's so many techniques we can do. I avoid a lot of the spinous process stuff. I think it's all fine technique, but I try and avoid it. I'm more likely to hit something that's very sensitive at the surface there. So I'll do something like this. 